Are we on? Let's get the phone. Just check. Right. Live. Let's just wait for a few more people to get involved. There's our question. Have we got anyone on? Yeah, a few people coming in now. Are we on? Yeah. Might be a few sore heads up in Scotland after that Rangers win last night. Well, I don't mind. I'm going to mention it until the cows come home, but uh, yeah, there might be a few people not wanting to mention that. Real disaster for them. Right, should we start? Yeah, why not? Morning, everyone. <coughs> uh, there's a few people more coming online now. A few thumbs up, yeah. Uh, welcome to another edition of uh, Friday Mornings, uh, help and advice on different surfaces this week. Like last week, uh, we talked about uh, porcelain, grout haze, um, first wash, cleaner number four, stuff like that, how you can clean the grout. Uh, this week we're going to talk about the ceiling uh, of porcelain as well. So, you want to kick off Martin? Yeah, so um, we've... Porcelain, obviously, there's a couple of different types um, that we need to consider. We've got uh, polished porcelain. So you want to get some examples of that needs to be sealed, and we've also got uh, matte textured porcelain, and then there's also lapato, which is like a semi shine. So it's sort of in between. It's it's polished, but it's only brought up to a medium shine. So we're going to look at uh, the different ways that we seal them and the reasons why and the application methods and then also obviously every porcelain tile you know in between it is grout okay so when it's standard grout obviously that's that's got an element of porosity and that that needs to be sealed and will benefit from a seal okay so obviously if it's epoxy grout then that that just looks after itself within you know within its own nature so we're going to look at these three different areas to just understand why we seal them and then obviously the benefits that come with that. The first one we'll touch on is grout. Okay, so every porcelain tile that gets laid in between it is a grout joint. Okay, so if that's the standard grout, it's going to have um, an element of porosity. So if we can seal that, it's going to be a massive benefit to the floor. So the, the beauty of the seal is it's going to give oil and water repellency to the grout joints. So if we're in a kitchen, it's going to anything like olive oil, uh, butter, if we've got any beetroot juice, tomato juice, anything like that, if that drops on the grout, if that drops on the grout, obviously if it's a light coloured grout, it's going to stain it and it's going to soak <clears> in. <throat> so if we can seal that and prevent any element of porosity in the grout, what's going to happen? Daily, weekly maintenance, the homeowner can just clean that off. Okay. Now, nice and easy with that one because there's 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 different arguments out there. Um, so. From a technical point of view, um, and we'll just use, so these tiles here, so these are from a Portuguese company called Pavigress. Um, so what you've actually got is Pavigress don't recommend that you seal any of the textured uh, surfaces in porcelain. It's homogenous tile, so it doesn't need sealing necessarily. But the polished porcelain ones do, because of the micropores that are in there. But even if we decide that we're not gonna seal any of these surfaces, what holds all these tiles together, like Martin said, is the actual grout joints. And the grout joints do really need to be sealed because even though grout is coming on leaps and bounds and there's elements of 
uh, repellency and protection that they're putting into to the ground, it won't completely repel them. So we're trying to say, well, actually we want to make maintenance as easy as possible for the clients. So that's why we're looking at actually just sealing the grout if you decide that you don't want to seal the tiles, but we'll try and give you a, an insight into why you do want to seal the tiles as well. So obviously the key benefit for sealing the grout is, like we said, it gives protection against oil and water-based stains. It keeps the grout looking cleaner for longer, which if anybody knows over the sort of last 10, 15 years, there's been a big shift in other materials like Antico, Candy and stuff like that because homeowners not not got fed up with the tile, <coughs> it's just they couldn't keep the grout clean. Okay? And the major, you know, um, thing that helped work sort of give the grout that problem was some of the now traditional methods that people are using is they might use a flat mop, they might use say a steam mop, and what happens is you've got a nice smooth tile and as the pad goes along, it picks up the dirt and then it drops it into the ground line. Okay? So what happens is the dirt starts to build up. There's also a combination of uh, cleaning residue, soap, polymers. They get built up on the floor, they're in the grout joints, and their job is to grab onto dirt. Okay? So we can put product to seal on the grout that makes it easier to maintain keeps it looking cleaner for longer, it's only going to be a benefit for the homeowner, you know. What, what Martin's saying there is, so these are the these are the mop systems that people are using. So it might be on a flat mop, like this one, um, it could be that it's on a steam mop. So like we say, once these are full, if these aren't getting changed regularly, then there's no more, no more dirt, no more soils that are going into these, so it's going to push it into its low ground joints. So that's the kind of thing that Martin's talking about, these kind of mops. Okay, so that's the grout. So the the next uh, porcelain tile to consider is polished porcelain. Okay, so what what's happening here? We'll try and explain why th this does need sealing. Okay, and you know some of them come sort of pre-sealed, or they have an element of a protector on, which might be, you know, traditionally it was called a transit wax which was put on to protect the tiles when they were, say, in the container coming on the boat, when they go over the waves, the tiles are face-to-face, -face, and what we don't want is them scratching, or we don't want any of the actual um, the builder's residue while they're being laid going into the tile. Okay, so what happens is a polished porcelain will start just as a normal porcelain tile, okay? And what they actually do <coughs> is they cut the top off, okay, a bit like the way we diamond polish, marble, granite, but they cut the top off and what happens is it, they then polish it up and it creates a smooth surface and that's what creates the shine. So the actual, the smoother the surface we can make, the more the light can bounce off it. Okay. I'm sure that we, um, what, what we've got here is this is the same tile, I'm coming a little bit closer to the cameras, can you see? Um, <laughs> So this is the same tile, so it's the same material right the way through and then they'll put different textures on at the factory and then when this one is actually, this one's shiny, is a better example. The polish portion, so they'll mechanically polish this uh, with diamonds, constant pressure, constant water and that's what then creates this level of shine, so it's not something that's superficial over the surface, this is actually polished. So what happens is when, when we cut that top off, see all these, these dots here, they could be, um, so basically when it's in the factory, they mix all the compounds, the clays and everything, and then that's, that's called a slurry, okay? So as that goes through the process, um, and it goes through the machines, gets pressed, and then it goes into the kiln, as that happens, if there's anything in that slurry or that initial powder so it might be a bug or a fly it might be some dust uh, you know some external contaminants like grass or so, something that's come into the factory made its way into the powder mix when that goes in the kiln because of the heat it gets burnt away so it leaves this tiny micro pore within the tile so 
on a on a standard textured or matte porcelain, we're not going to get this issue because it's within the tile. But because when they do the polishing process, it opens up these tiny little micro pores. Okay, so here you can actually see under a microscope all these little micro pores within the actual porcelain tile. So when they become open, that's what's then susceptible to staining. So over the years we've seen it um, sometimes with you put a sort of a white or a cream tile and the customer goes for a con contrasting grout. So they go for a black grout. So the black pigments go in and sit in these tiny micro pores. Okay, but they're that small, it's like near impossible. The actual results of cleaning it out are very slim to none. So we've had it with um, cement, mortar, anything with sort of a bit of colour and pigment in, might be a footprint. So people stand on it and the, the weight of the pressure pushes it into these micropores and then you get like footprints. But the problem is you can't feel it on the glaze. It's, it's like it's under the glaze. So it's like soaked in. So it's just sat in these tiny micro pores. Okay. So the way to stop that is we need to seal that to fill them up so, so nothing can go in. So like I say, a lot of the porcelain now come with a pre-seal, um, but that might be just to sort of get it through its installation stage. And that's really important. So pre-seal. So it's not a full seal. So if you're dealing with any of the manufacturers, we deal with quite a few of the manufacturers and they'll all stipulate that it does need to be sealed. That's, this is polished portion that we're talking about. So it comes with like an element of a seal before installation, or sorry, once installations happen, it needs to be sealed before it's grouted. So you get what's called a pre-grout release. So it means it's nice and easy. Because what you have, so here you can see the liquid. So the viscosity of this is, is really low. But the problem is the hole is that tight that you can't actually get any product in to lift out the dirt. So the process in essence of removing any soils, any grout or anything like that is a lot easier on the texture porcelain because it's a lot more open. Whereas when it's polished, it's really tight so you can't actually get it in there. So it's nigh on impossible to actually remove any potential grout haze if it's not been sealed before that grout is being installed. So what we've done, we'll come on to it shortly, but we basically, we, we created the seal, which we call CPL, which it stands for Ceramic, Porcelain and Lapato Tiles, okay? And what it is, it's a very small molecule, okay? So it's not designed to fill up, say, a very open stone, like a, a sandstone, um, something like a very porous white limestone. It's designed to go into these very small micropores and fill those areas up. Okay? So if we can do that, obviously nothing can penetrate into the tile and sit in these pores. So again, it's going to stop any um, issues with sort of staining and from installation with grout pigments or other contaminants that we find on the building site. Okay. So the, the last one that we need to cover is the ceiling of textured and matte porcelain. Okay. Do a diagram as well. Yeah. So, what we've got is this is a little bit of a grey area. Technically, these tiles don't don't need sealing because they're completely impervious. They're a homogeneous tile. They're fired at very high heat. They're very strong um, structure, chemical resistance, and you know the porosity level is so low and generally. The element of porosity is on the back of the tile because that's what helps it bond and grip to the adhesive. So, you know, you'll see on a lot of uh, tile shop websites, stuff like that, they sell them and they sort of use terms like maintenance free or easy maintenance and stuff like that. So technically, yes, the tiles are easy to clean <coughs> with the right methods. Okay, and that's what we sort of discussed last week. So what we need to do is We've got a customer that's got a textured porcelain and forever and the day, they just use a standard mop, a flat mop or a string mop. Okay, They've not got access to machinery or oscillating technology that's going to you know, bring the dirt out of those low spots. Okay, So here's an example of um, a textured porcelain that's not protected. 
Okay, so you've got the low spots in the tile, which give it its texture uh, and its sort of anti-slip properties. Okay, so as we go in, we've got the dirt that sits in, and then obviously from traditional maintenance, we mop it, but the mop only gets up here. Okay, so it leaves this little bit of dirt behind. Okay. That, that could be the same. So let's just imagine that this is actually freshly laid grout. So the grout has found the low spots. Uh, and then when it's being washed off, the wash boy can only potentially take off that top bit. It needs constant washing, which again, Martin said, we talked about last week, which can cause different kinds of problems. So we need to deal with this. So the idea of the all-in-one CPL is that it goes in and what we do, we have um, a specific process of application where we apply it and then we buff it off. So it doesn't create a film uh, that sits on top, it doesn't affect the slip resistance in any way. And what it does, it goes in and it just sits there at the low spots in the tile, it just fills up. So your surface tile is there, again, that's where your foot is. So as you, as you stand on it, you've still got this little tread, like a tread in your tire. So it won't aquaplane, it will disperse the water and your foot will grip. So the seal is sat down there. Okay, so now as the floor gets dirty, the dirt is gonna sit up here, that little bit higher. So the idea is now from your traditional methods of mopping, uh, deck scrubbing, or maybe sort of a scrubber dryer or a rotary machine, that can clean up here and remove the dirt, okay? So we can keep on top of the tile. So what we found is that this process of sealing the grout and also working the excess into the face of the tile, the textured or matte porcelain, what it will do, any of these low spots, it, it will fill up and what it does, it just aids the maintenance and makes it easier for the customer to keep on top of the floor. Should we do, um, we'll just grab the pipette, we'll give you a, a quick demonstration. So, um, there's some water just on there. Oh, there you go. Right, so one of these, one of these tiles is sealed. Visually, there's no difference between them. Okay, so even though we're saying that we don't necessarily need to seal any of these textured surfaces, we're just gonna show you that it still offers that element of repellency. So, and what we'll see now, if we get some tissue and why, you'll see that you get slug trails. So, so on this one here, it's just sitting there. Whereas on this side here, if we can see that, I'll try and do a, another video on this so you can see, but there's slug trails which are actually going across. So it's actually getting in here, where it's not on this side, it's just kind of like beading across the surface. So we call them slug trails, just so where it's actually getting in. You can see it there a little bit better, where you can see like this purling effect, where it's sat on the surface, whereas here it's actually getting in, so it's showing the trail of where that water passed. Because what we're expecting from a seal, so I've gone off slightly with, this is a, um, obviously a, a natural stone, but it's not actually going through. So the seal is completely repellent to water and oil. So the seals are exactly the same to make sure that you have got the protection. So this stuff is really easy for your clients. So whether it's just gone down, whether it's something where you've just restored it and you've cleaned it and then you seal it, just sealing it is gonna aid with the maintenance for the client. But it technically, you could say that it doesn't need sealing. Um, but to go back, where we then talked about the grout joints that are in there, the grout joints do need sealing. So, where you've got the tile that's being sealed. So I'd right, say so this one, if this is a tile, what, what we're gonna look at is we're gonna work on or paint on some sealer onto all these grout joints. Yeah, it's gonna overlap onto the tile. Okay, so what we can then do to remove it, we're going to buff it off. Mm. So by doing that, we're actually, what, what we're going to do is buff it into the tile. Obviously, where there's any micro pores, 
element of texture and the structure of the tile, it, it will go in there and then obviously as that dries, it will give the effect on the screen and it will aid the maintenance, okay? Because obviously we're not going to be able to just paint on the grout lines anyway without getting it on the tile. So we may as well, as part of the process, the excess that's here either side of the joint, just work it into the tile and where it can take it and benefit the tile, it will. So it's only going to be, you know, a plus point for the customer. Square, square meterage on, on CPL can be anything from 30 to 75 square meters per litre. So it's not going necessarily into certain parts of the tile, only where it can, but it's the grout that it's sealing. So again, this is, if it was that the tile, you do decide not to, to uh, seal the tile with something like CPL, then what we have is we have a product here. So it comes in different colors. Uh, and this is where we literally, we put it onto the joints and it'll change the color. So if it's a white grout, we just put a white clear seal on there or a white seal, not clear seal, sorry. And then it will just make sure that there's consistency in that grout and it will give it its repellency. So this is like a, in essence, it's like a pancake mix that we're, we're putting onto the surface. It'll wipe off the surface, but it will just go into and bond with the actual grout joint. So depending on whether you want to seal the whole tile and the grout, which is nice and easy, uh, or if you just want to seal the actual the grout lines themselves, there's an option for you on both sides. So that's the solution that we've produced here at Tile Master is the, the CPL. And again, like I say, that will go on a ceramic tile, a porcelain or a lapato. Okay, so uh, lapato is maybe a term people aren't that familiar with, but um, it's basically <coughs> an Italian word for semi-shine. Okay, so it's just, you get them these, these porcelains now, they're not quite polished and they've just sort of got a nice sort of medium uh, sheen on them. So they need sealing as well. So again, we've produced sealing process in the so we've got a full um, guide of what you need to do we've got equipment the coverage rates and the actual procedure okay so that's that's pretty much it on on porcelain sealing but if you've got any questions feel free to pop them in the comments uh, drop us a direct message or email and we'll be happy to, to help where we can and we, uh, we didn't say this last week, but a couple of guys have messaged us uh, outside of this asking for us to cover certain topics. So if you've got any topics that you're asking us to cover or, or you want information on, then just ping them across. We'll build it into one of these on a Friday morning. Um, because again, it's, we're trying to produce solutions to potentially problems in the market. So if you guys can, can find problems or you're struggling somewhere, then we'll try and find a solution for that and help you move forward. So yeah. Yeah, I think Happy Friday, do you reckon? Yeah, I think a couple of requests we had. One was uh, travertine, sort of how to deal with that from uh, a renovation and upkeeping point of view. So discussing sort of holes, filling them, uh, and how to seal and finish travertine. Uh, and also another one was like quarry tiles, so all Victorians. Uh, a few guys get some issues with the, the pits in the lighter colours, the whites and the yellows. Um, so actually we're happy to maybe go through that and explain why that comes about and obviously how we can manage the customer's expectations. So yeah, any, anything like that, let us know and we'll be happy to, to do a video. Uh, we've got a, uh, a few people asked about polishing. Uh, this isn't, I guess it is a plug, but not a plug. So we've got the polishing course uh, coming up and we also have the uh, anti-acid uh, no etch day that, that's going to be coming up. Uh, we'll be launching the dates later today, is it? I think it's later yeah. today that we said that we, we'd go through. We've got some dates, but we're just confirming a few different things. So that's that, about the protection of different surfaces to protect against uh, any acid etching. So um, thanks very much for your time. Um, like and subscribe if you already haven't. Hit that bell notification. I quite like saying that, you know, now. Hit that bell notification. You know what? I think people like to unsubscribe. That's what yeah, 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 quite possibly. Uh, uh, happy Friday, everybody. Um, don't forget, it's Friday, so chippy tea. All the best, guys. Thank you.